A very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us on BTV Major News at 6, reaching you live from Benin City, Edo State Capital, Nigeria. My name is Tosin Toluwaloju. Before we begin tonight, let's quickly take the news our light. Go a long way to encourage young people to participate in decision making processes and in civic engagement. It is a testament to our commitment to ensuring that every citizen, regardless of their background or all circumstances, has access to the support and resources they need to take. But today we say no more. Today we take a stand against stigma and discrimination. I want to reduce the queue in this place. The, point, the whole pump has to be selling. All the pumps has to be selling. Once the full pump are selling, I believe the, 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 the queue will reduce. It's good for us to have this traffic light, and I like the traffic light. But this one that is particular at uh, this uh, third junction, so it's not just good at all. The well, I want to, we are not going to be too rigid about it. What is important to us is that we uh, they understand, they appreciate why they need to turn a new And the Federal Executive Council has approved the institutionalization of a 10% youth quota in all government appointments and an equitable young women representation. Dr. Jamila Ibrahim, Minister of Youth, disclosed this at the end of the fourth FEC meeting in Abuja. She said that the council also approved the restructure of the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund and the revamping of the Youth Investment Fund. BTV News Best Orito has stated. The Minister of Youth says the quota would encourage young people to participate in decision-making processes and in civic engagements. Well, this will go a long way to address the long marginalization and exclusion of young people in decision-making and um, will also go a long way to encourage young people to participate in decision-making processes and in civic engagements. This will in turn lead to... Um, young people contributing tremendously to national development agenda. Meanwhile, the Federal Executive Council has approved the setting up of an infrastructure fund to be known as the Renewed Hope Infrastructure Fund. This followed a projection that Nigeria would require over $878 billion to bridge infrastructural deficits in the country. We need national infrastructure backbone and to get this done because if you look at the analysis of uh, integrated infrastructure master plan that was commissioned in 2020 we will require 895 billion in the next 10 years dollar to actually gap the infrastructure problem the federal executive council also approved the construction of 28 roads and bridges across the country worth over 1.2 trillion naira the minister of works dave umai said the project were approved by fec having gone through the bureau of public procurement and certificates of no objection secure best orator reporting for btv news President Bola Tinubu yesterday condemned what he described as the reprehensible acts perpetrated by kidnappers across the country, declaring that individuals involved in such debacable crimes must be treated as terrorists. This was as the Zamfara State Governor Daoud Lawa has said the state was under the siege of banditry and kidnapping and therefore pleaded that the federal government come to his aid. The report is presented by Gifts Wagwe. Governor Daoud Alawa, who said the state had become something else as a result of the frequent attacks by bandits, called for a more military presence and security formations in the state. Making this disclosure on Tuesday while speaking with newsmen after the meeting with President Tinibu at the State House, Abuja, Lawa warned that the insecurity in Zamfara portended threats to the entire north. The president, however, made the declaration at the State House, Abuja, at a Ramadan dinner with members of the federal judicial led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN, Justice Olukayode Ariwola, reiterating the government's resolve to defeat banditry, Tidibu said those who resorted to kidnapping children were cowards, incapable of confronting the might of the Nigerian armed forces. He said they must treat kidnappers as terrorists and they are cowardly. Unless you take very strong action 
the Gilbert Circle. They become cowardly, they have been degraded, they look for soft targets, they go to backyard of, uh, you know, local tools, kidnap children and create disaffection. President Tinubu said the kidnappers have been degraded. They look for soft targets, and that is why they go to schools and kidnap children and cause disaffection. Gifts Uagbo reporting for BTV News. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of DIG Jensen Kokumo retired as a new coordinator of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons under the Office of the National Security Advisor. Kokumo succeeds Major General A.M. Diko retired whom former President Muhammad Buhari appointed as the pioneer coordinator on May 3, 2021. The presidency announced his appointment Tuesday in a statement signed by Tinubu Special Advisor of Media and Publicity at Jury in Gelale, titled President Tinubu's Appoint New Coordinator for the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons. Gelale described Kokumo as a seasoned and accomplished law enforcement professional with over 30 years of experience in crime prevention, management, analysis, and control. He was Deputy Inspector General of Police, First Criminal Intelligence and Investigations Department, First Headquarters, Abu. The President says he expects the new coordinator to deploy his immense experience and expertise in efforts to revamp the center and evolve new strategies to bring lasting solutions to the many of arms proliferation, which is a significant driver of insecurity in the country. No fewer than 48 repentant cultists in Sagamu area of Ogun State have surrendered their arms to the Nigerian police force and renounced their membership in the various cult groups that they belong. The ceremony to profile the repentant cultists and take stock of the arms and ammunition was held at the palace of Akaribo of Remoland or by Adewale Ajayi in the Shagamu local government area of the state on Tuesday. BTV News, Angela Ilegoma as duties. The two groups had in a viral letter pleaded for mercy and promised to abide by the laws of the country. While the letters from the AA Confraternity was dated December 22, 2023, that of AA was dated December 26, 2023. Weapons submitted by the courtes who have promised to turn in new leaves include one pop action gun, four double barrels, seven single barrels, two English pistols, four locally made pistols, and 35 cartridges. Speaking at the event, the State Commissioner of Police, Abiodun Alamutu, said the approach of the police to engage in moral persuasion as a way of curbing the incessant courtesy crisis that have ravaged the part of the state led the courtesy to renounce their membership and surrender their arms. Alamutu, while urging the repentant courtesy not to go back to their old ways, stressed that the police would also work with the Ogun state government and the traditional rulers to convert them into an anti courtesy vanguard that would preach the dangers of courtesy to others still engaged in the act. When we want to, we are not going to be too rigid about it. What is important to us is that we uh, they understand, they appreciate why they need to turn a new leaf. And that is the basic reason why we are extending this olive branch. In his reaction, Oba Ajayi said the amnesty for the courtes was a result of several engagements and discussions during when many of the courtes regretted their nefarious actions and promised to turn a new leaf. The circumstance, this is the best that we can do. To engage the sports, to talk to them, and also uh, tell them that there is not a crime, crime does not pay. And this era of policy, the era of uh, this, they have to do a good with it. The monarch thanked the governor, Dakbo Abiodun, security agencies, and the Sagamu Security Committee, and the Sagamu Security Committee for working around the clock to ensure that sources of amnesty deal for the former courtesy. Angela Ilegma reporting for BTV News.
The candidate of Accord Party in the September 21st Edo governorship election, Dr. Bright in Nabulele, has promised genuine and positive transformation for the state if given the opportunity to serve. BTV News Best Orator reports that Dr. Nabulele made the promise when he visited the Koba Oka Ward 5 executive of Accord Party to seek for their full support ahead of the commencement of campaign. The reports. Addressing a court party ward executive members of Ward 5, Ikubaha local government area, where he plays his local politics, Dr. Bright in Abulele said, A Joe people needs positive change. He said, When elected, we provide economic emancipation and the youth will be gainfully engaged so as to ward off their minds from criminal activities. He said his administration will be the administration of everyone, as no one will be sidelined, noting that the wind of positive change is about to be blown in Edo State because he is going to bring his Western knowledge and experience of over three decades in the United States and other continents of the world to the nooks and crannies of Edo State, saying that he will be a servant leader. Change is the only thing that is constant in life. And I hear the winds of change. I have traveled around the world. I've been around four continents. From Asia to Europe, Africa, North America, Caribbean. I've seen the highest of the hills and the lowest of the valley. But one thing that's important to me, how do I bring this knowledge back to my own life? How do I bring this experience to improve the life of my people? Where a man will not be scared to marry. The Accord Party gubernatorial hopeful said his main focus will be agriculture as he tends to make Edo State the food basket of Nigeria. He told the world leaders that he will champion free education so that the children who are future leaders will have a solid educational foundation. Next on his agenda will be healthcare delivery and will ensure pregnant women across the state have access to free Medicare. We can also feed our family. When a nation is coming like this, People will gather together, give you money. They will say, here is two million, three million. You think you can empower the you anymore? Because they are paid you. If I pay you, I don't have business with you. You know, you want a leader that will be work for you. Irregardless, whether there is politics or no politics, our children should be able to eat. We have farms. We have agriculture. We want to empower our youth. From not just in the Kowaka, in the entire Edo state. Whether you are from Edo South, Edo Central, Edo North, it's one Edo. Some of the world's executives said with Dr. Bright in Abulele, the election will be a walkover for a court party. You can see the, the quality of the leader. In him. You can see when he was talking. There's a new dawn, there's a new hope to a dawn light. So I believe it's not by mistake. We are happy to have such a son, a little son of a dog DG, to be in our midst to talk to us. So Bright in Abulele, as our state governor, because he's a man with capacity. We have tried the rest, but they failed us. But he's just coming out to make to put my on a dual state face. And now I believe we are coming back to our court. We are coming back full to win this vote to my governor. To win this vote for Dr. Bright in Abulele as our governor. In an interview with BTV News, Dr. Bright in Abulele appreciated the Kubaha Ward 5 executives for their resolution to work wholeheartedly for the party so as to form the next administration in Edo State. Charity because at home. I love the I love the warm welcoming. It's a very colorful ambience. And for me, it shows people are ready. They know that they are listening for the campaign to start. They cannot wait. I just told them they should prepare for April 25th. Uh, when the campaign starts, I will come back here and address them and make sure they go from door to door to change the narrative of Edo State. Because in, my, in this world, the wind of change is coming. 
and is echo everywhere. Dr. Brighton Abulele said a court party is number one on the ballot paper, and so a dope people cannot miss the mark on election day. Best orator reporting for BTV News. Moving on, the long queues of vehicles seen at the NNPC Mega Fungi Station on the Sapler Road as the civilian city have elicited reactions from motorists, some attributing the frequent queues to the cheaper pump price per litre at the Fungi Station compared to all the surrounding stations whose price per litre are quite on the high side. BTV News correspondent who went on a fact-finding mission at the Mega Petrol Station in Benin City on why motorists choose to queue up despite availability of fuel in different filling stations. The report. Mega petrol stations in Sapler Road, Benin City, creating the false impression in the eyes of observers of fuel scarcity, which is not. Some motorists here who spoke with BTV News crew said that they have been on the queue for hours trying to purchase premium motor spirit from the fuel station for their vehicles. In an interview, some motorists attributed the long vehicle queues at the mega filling station to the fact that petrol is sold at a cheaper pump price rate per liter at 591 naira compared to other petrol stations' pump prices, which can go up to as much as 700 naira per litre in other filling stations and added that the fuel meters of the NNPC mega filling station are better than others outside. Some among the motorists appeal to the authorities of the NNPC mega filling station to increase the number of working petrol supply points in order to reduce the stressful queues and added the fuel meters of the NNPC mega filling station. I really want to reduce the queue in this place. The, point, the whole pump have to be selling all the pumps has to be selling once the full pump are selling i believe the the the, the queue will reduce and because it is cheap i doubt much if it will be reduced because at least let's say 40 percent of people in Benin here like buying fuel here one is cheap so if you buy fuel for five thousand here and you buy for here other filling station on five thousand the difference will be quite clear. So it will not reduce, to me it will not reduce, because the demand of this filling station is totally high. Well, if, even if they reduce the price, the pump price of fuel, other filling stations are selling lower, I mean, uh, at a certain price, lower than the, maybe around 700, you will also always see a queue here, this particular filling station, because of those three advantages I have just uh, uh, mentioned better price, uh, better product, and um, uh, better meter. Your meter is also better. And others are not selling normal price. And both considering the liter too, is the liter that is a little bit okay. So that is why people like to buy from here. Here yeah, it's cheaper than another filling station. That's why everybody is queue up here. We are suffering. We are suffering. Nigerians are suffering. I didn't even know how much they are selling. But they are selling 700 naira. But I understand they say five, five something here. I don't know how true is that. That's why we are here. I'm here since uh, an hour ago. Yeah, I'm hoping it's getting to my tongue. It's because of the increase in the pump price in the private finish stations. So that's the problem. This one is cheaper. And everybody is going where it's cheaper. That's why. The ammeter is good. That's why we are here. And other people are digested their meters. That's why we are here. Meanwhile, as at the time of the news crew visiting the mega filling station, the seemingly long queues of vehicles was moving forward gradually as motorists were able to purchase petrol. Olua Toy Oyedola reporting for BTV News. The Leprosy Mission Nigeria, TLMN, in an effort to provide sustainable psychological support and referral service to communities experiencing distress, have commissioned a toll-free call center to address the crucial need for accessible mental health services. Best Orator reports. In an event that sees the network of support from all stakeholders in the disability community, the Leprosy Mission Nigerian Commission's a call center to assess critical needs 
to mental services for persons with disabilities in psychological distress. While commissioning the center, the senior special advisor to the president of special needs and equal opportunities, Honorable Muhammad Abba Issa, says the center represents a beacon of hope to individuals often marginalized and overlooked. For those of them find themselves marginalized and overlooked, it is a testament to our commitment to ensuring that every citizen, regardless of their background or all circumstances, has access to the support and resources they need to take. But today we say no more. Today we take a stand against stigma and discrimination. We affirm our belief in the inherent dignity and worth of every human being. And we declare our own unwavering commitment to building a society where everyone has the opportunity to live a life of dignity and fulfillment. The Leprosy Mission Nigeria, TLMN National Director Dr. Sunday Udo, speaks on the crucial aspect of overall well being as other stakeholders appreciate the inclusivity. As we all know, mental health is a crucial aspect of overall well being. It is a facet of healthcare that unjustly receives less attention than it deserves in this country. In fact, globally, but worse in Nigeria, particularly when it comes to those with disabilities. Combating the stigma and discrimination associated with mental health has been an ongoing battle, and today we stand strong to fight that fight. In the NTDs, we know the importance of mental health, and that is the more reason why we are developing or reviewing our NTD master plan, mental health was captured and incorporated. I want to assure you that the NTDs program will collaborate effectively with you and support you all the way. Thank you and God bless you. Today is a great day to be a person with disabilities because um, the journey of a thousand miles, miles has just commenced. What do I mean and why are we here? For the first time in the history of the disability community, we have a hotline, that's what I choose to call it, a hotline where we can call in and have our well-being, our mental issues, because you see, one of the major issues of disabilities that is not addressed in this country is the post-traumatic stress disorder of disabilities, especially for those of us who acquired disabilities, who were not born with a disability. Now we have a number 0800-005060 that you can call and then have some level of, uh, a high level of, in, you know, interaction that can tell you what the challenge you're facing is how you can navigate through the challenge and what the future can hold for you with that challenge. Psychological distress knows no boundaries as it can affect anyone regardless of age, gender or socioeconomic status. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. Small and medium scale enterprises have always played a vital role in the growth of most advanced economies in the world. In Nigeria, small-scale businesses and entrepreneurs have often clamored for government assistance to survive so that they can promote economic growth. Respondents who spoke with BTV News correspondents outlined ways in which the government, either state or federal, can boost the growth of small-scale businesses in the country. The measures suggested including eliminating multiplication, provision of cost and power access, access to road, and to some access to roads to some businesses in suburban area, loans and so on. The report by Oyin Lambert is presented by Regina Ochomo. Many have looked up to small-scale businesses and entrepreneurs in the area of boosting the economy and creating jobs. But most small-scale business owners have raised alarm over the un unseasoning on their businesses due to the harsh economic climate in the country, worsened by lack of basic amenities and necessary finances. Some small and medium-scale businesses have even folded up because of the affirmation factors over the years. The government can play a positive and impactful role in empowering private businesses to try 
thrive in the country. BTV News Crew, we are the city center and gathered from many Nigerians that the government has a role in the revival of small scale businesses through the provision of finances and soft loans, accessible roads, and stable power supply, especially in areas of production of items and local technology. The major thing is for the government to see how to improve and to finance all those small, small businesses. If you go to Ulemona for, for maybe sometime, for a month, there will be no light. How do you expect those small scale businesses, like all those barbers, welders, all those, all those, all those uh, businesses that depend on lights, electricity, to do well? They cannot do well. Why? Because one, fuel price, we see, look at fuel price, we look at diesel price, they are high. Do you understand? With that, you don't expect them to do well. And they should try a way to see how they can finance them, all these small scale financing to finance them. Do you understand? So that at least with little interest, do you understand? At least they should bring it closer to the people in the rural area. I think those, those are the people that mostly can do better when it comes to these small scale businesses. Better the life of the poor is uh, for small scale business is by giving those who are serious to do the business. It's not those that their relationship, who though they are not serious, uh, they give it to them, they will not waste the money. Look for people that really need this money, that want to do business and, fo and focus on the business that and put uh, and poke on the business and make the business become a reality to them. It's not those uh, that we waste the money. If government do that for people that really need it, I think uh, with their seriousness, so, if something will come out from it and government will like it. One of the critical challenge that the Nigeria uh, small scale business and managers are facing is the issue of light. That today, you can be, we can barely celebrate life for 24 hours. And part of, uh, part of what we need as a young man or as a youth who is a businessman to grow up his business in the area of technology is light. And in the other angle, governments have a lot of role to play in supporting those young youth who are really willing to want to work or who are really, really want to be Come a manager of them. They should also look. They should also look into the areas of all these our own graduates, who have not graduated, who are business owner, to who are business owner already, to support. So the government of the day has a lot of role to play in supporting small scale business owner of our type. So if the government can empower them, especially the youths so that to empower them more so that they can even after school they can even in school or after school they can have something doing because entrepreneur is the best business we can ever be, uh, we can ever imagine because being an entrepreneur give us to more confidence and to improve in our financial st status this therefore means that all state governments in Nigeria should follow in the steps of industrialized nations by providing adequate and sustainable empowerment for small and medium scale businesses and in enterprise as such action will drive economic growth. Regina Ujoma reporting for BTV News. The Vice President, Senator Kashim Sheikh Sima, has set the flag off of the training on digitalization of workflow processes in the state house is a fulfillment of President Bola and Mentinubu's promise to build an efficient workforce that is truly in tune with reality leveraging technology. The training the Vice President added is a compelling testament to the President's steadfast adherence to the principle of leading by example. BTV News, Angela Elegoma has details. Senator Shetima was presented at the opening ceremony of the training program for staff on the digitalization of workflow processes in the State House by the Deputy Chief of Staff to the President, Office of the Vice President, Senator Ibrahim Hadeja. According to the Vice President, the goal of leveraging opportunities in mechanic learning and artificial intelligence to transform the entire public service cannot be actualized unless those tasks with executing the tasks are in tune with reality. He explained that at the inception of this administration, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu articulated his promise to implement digital initiatives across seven pivotal areas, innovation, entrepreneurship, service provision, outsourcing, technology manufacturing, e-commerce, and the digitalization of public service, underpinned by broadband and blockchain technologies. 
This is where the vision of the president is operationalized and translated to the other indigenous companies for greater productivity and a good side of the goal. The goal is to commence the process and scale it across the civil service. Believe me that it will be a good service. The vice president further observed that the overwhelming paper-based bureaucracy within the civil service infrastructure is at odds with the demands of the present era. He said it falls upon everyone to serve as the conduit to a system redefined by the frontiers of machine learning and artificial intelligence. A system that calls upon all to utilize the natural intelligence to its fullest extent. And a system that challenges people to compete to build an efficient workforce that reflect the dynamic realities of our time. He he noted that the status quo is no longer tenable because the world is undergoing a profound transformation. Because they go hand in hand. Um, uh, no matter how uh, professional you are, Senator Shetima assured that the training will equip staff to understand the need for the digitalization of government processes, that procedures for handling sensitive government information, and how to respond to Nigeria seeking information from the government. Angela Elegoma reporting for BTV News. Labour Party National Chairman Mr. Julius Abure has been re-elected to steer the ship of the party for another four years. The expired protest against the holding of the National Convention by a section of the party is faithful. The Chairman of the National Convention and Deputy Governor of Abia State, Mr. Ikechupu Emetu, declared him the winner during the party's National Convention that was aired on Wednesday in Newi and Nabra State. Abure's emergence as Labour Party National Chairman is without the support of obedience, who constitute the fulcrum of, of Peter Obi's support in the 2023 presidential election. There are whispers that Obi is not in solidarity with Abure, who has been locked in a controversy over campaign funds mismanagement, as alleged by now suspended Labour Party National Treasurer Oluchi Opara, who accused the National Chairman of misappropriating. 3.5 billion naira. Our Labour Party will fare without the support of the obedience will be closely watched by pundits. And the Chartered Institute of Cost Managers of Nigeria has aired its 2024 induction ceremony. The president of the Institute's chief Sunday PO Omekwe has enjoyed I beg your pardon, the president of the institute, Chief Sunday P.O. Omekwe, Ph.D., while welcoming fellows and joined them to embrace a transformative mindset as it relates to the economy of the nation as cost managers. The report. It was a great delight for inductees of the Chartered Institute of Cost Management Nigeria as they were presented by the Registrar of the Institute, Honorable Nosa Victor Omoege, as qualified cost managers who have fulfilled all the requirements of the Institute, hence their certification. President of the Institute, Chief Sunday P.O. Omekwe, Ph.D., while welcoming our inductees into the institution, stated that beyond the certifications, inductees should think differently as it relates to the economy of the nation as cost managers. The chairman on the occasion and managing director of independent television and radio, engineer Evis Obaseki, in a remark, celebrated the inductees, urging them to live and work with integrity and reputation as change agents in the society. Being inducted into the Chartered Institute of Cost Management is not just for the certificate that you are probably going to be given. And the big gowns we always wear, Nigerian forces wear the big gowns. We are also we are also wearing one now, colorful. But it's beyond that. We know the impact we have made in this economy. If Nigerians are Nigerians. The impact this institute had made will probably won't be here. So my dear brothers and my sisters, 
I will sit down and always remind you in life, your assessment is done in your absence. Mm -hmm. yes. There is no exam that you can teach. That you are also there with the exam and then you are not So, what is your assessment? What are they assessing about you? The Registrar, Honorable Nosa Victor Omoige, in a paper presentation noted that Nigeria is blessed with vast deposits of human and material resources for the nation's inability to effectively manage its resources towards sustainable development is responsible for some of the economic woes it faces, hence crafting strategies for achieving cost effectiveness and efficiency at both micro and macro economic levels is essential. Resources are not for personal benefit. They are for the development of people. At the national level, once again, we call on the president, President Ola Ahmed Tinubu, and his team to consider expanding the issue and reawakening the spirit of the Bureau of Public Procurement and Due Process by bringing in the covering policy, which is the national policy on cost management that will hold every facet of the economy responsible for the spending of the national environment. Inductees expressed joy at being inducted into the institute as chartered cost managers. They stated that for them, it is a call to action on their part to prove worthy of the trainings that they have received. I feel so happy, I feel so elated, I am so glad and uh, uh, having been a part of this uh, great institution, my experience, what I'm taught here, I'm going to put it to bear. It doesn't stop here. We continue building ourselves by attending seminars. Uh -huh. Anytime they're doing seminars, you, you go there, that's from there, you, you get knowledge, you get knowledge, you get knowledge. The Chartered Institute of Cost Managers of Nigeria, CICMN, is a professional institute that has trained and injected over 7,000 cost management professionals into the Nigeria economy in both private and public sectors to go beyond cost reporting by preferring strategies for cost efficiency, promoting cost consciousness, and cost ownership culture. So, see to Lua Loju reporting for. BTV News. Motorists and road users have commended the innovative traffic light structure at the Sapler Road and Third Junction as is provided by the state government. Speaking with BTV News, a respondent stated that it is a good structure as it depicts the modern day kind of facility. The report. Motorists and road users have loved that the recent traffic light structure at the Sapler Road and Third Junction as is of the state by the Edo State Government. A respondent who spoke with BTV News stated that the structure is a good one as it depicts the modern day kind of facility. Another person commended the innovation as the first of its kind in Benin City as it would further his gridlock on the road. Yeah, it's very good, it's very good. It's, it's, it's welcomeable, yeah. Others from Third Junction, as this spoke with BTV News, while applauding the project, stated that the newly installed traffic light is not functioning yet as such. The government should please hasten up its functionality. The structure is okay, but it's giving us, it's congesting the road. But it's good for us to have this traffic light, and I like the traffic light. But this one that is particular at this uh, Third Junction, so... It's not just good at all. The delay is too much. Not to say the traffic light is okay, but our people, they know that they disobey the traffic light. That traffic lights are used to control the movement of vehicles and passengers to ensure smooth and safe traffic. To sing to Lua Lojo, reporting for BTV News. And thank you so much for staying with us. You're still on to BTV New Major News at 6, which is your live from Benin City, Edo State Capital. We will be going on a very short break to stay with us. Vacancy, vacancy, vacancy. A digital online TV studio, BTV News, with wide range of audiences, currently hiring reliable and experienced operational staff with background knowledge of the following positions. Experienced news manager, reporters and casters, 
film editors and videographers with experience of various editing softwares coupled with creativity. Transmission directors with knowledge of transmitting software and studio operations. Drivers with experience and knowledge of road signs. Interested applicants should send their CV and application to btvmedia2022 at gmail.com or send to the WhatsApp number 0808 585-3792-0808-585-3792. Signed, Uyi Lambert, Admin Secretary, BTV News. Original, no be quality EDS, for quality pentium. Na EDS, for quality pentium. Now EDS for emotion, super satin, super matto, gravitas penty day, test job penty day, and the high quality emotion. Now for EDS, ah, you don't go for the ah. Now for EDS. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Bidin Sapley Road, by Ogege Quarters, Bidin City, or our branch office, 68 Sapley Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now to the business news. As the reform policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria continue to gain effect to the international market, Naira notes continue to get eminence value to the U.S. dollars. Dollar supply by forex market players, including bank, increased by 10.72% to $245.58 million on Tuesday from $221.80 million recorded on Monday. BTV News gives Wabwe as details of this and more. From the Naira, Nigerian's currency, appreciated to 1,382.95 Naira per dollar following rising liquidity at the official foreign exchange FX market on Tuesday. The Naira has continued to appreciate against the U.S. currency across foreign exchange markets thanks to the recent reforms of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. After trading on Tuesday, the Naira gained 1.81%. 25.09 Naira as the dollar was quoted at 1,382.95 Naira, stronger than 1,408.04 Naira quoted on Monday at the Nigeria Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market, NAFEM. Data from the FMDQ Securities Limited indicated. The intraday high closed week at 1,486 Naira on Tuesday compared to 1,442 Naira closed on Monday. The intraday low closed steady at 1,300 Naira on the same day. The pressure on the foreign exchange market has eased as Naira on Tuesday appreciated to 1,340 Naira per dollar on the parallel market, stronger than 1,382.95 Naira on the official market, resulting in an exchange rate gap of 42.95 Naira. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has invited law enforcers to investigate some foreign exchange forward claims amounting to $2.4 billion as some stakeholders fought recent APEX bank claims that it cleared all backlogs. Kadosa, who disclosed in Abuja while briefing on the outcome of the two days CBN's Monetary Policy Committee MPC meeting, said those agitations were baseless, insisting that the CBN has cleared all valid FX obligations relying on the forensic audit reports by Deloitte consultants, which it engaged to thoroughly investigate and verify the entire claims. The Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Isaac Salako, has said the Ministry, through the National Oil Speed Detection and Response Agency, will be commencing periodic review of the plans of international and indigenous oil companies to ensure they stay on course to end routine gas flaring by 2030. Salako said this in Abuja on Tuesday at the National Stakeholders Engagement Meeting on methane mitigations and reduction in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. Methane, a potential greenhouse gas, with significant warning potential compared to carbon dioxide possesses a major threat to the health and well-being of current and future generations and climate protection goals. And that's it on Business News Tonight. Gifts Uwagboy reporting for BTV News. 
And on Global News Tonight, let's join Rebecca Goffey. Hezbollah launched rockets into northern Israel in response to Israeli airstrikes on a Lebanese village, resulting in one fatality in Israel and seven deaths in Lebanon. Israel claimed the airstrikes targeted militants, while Hezbollah accused them of hitting rescuers. The exchange of fire is part of the ongoing border clashes between Israel and Hezbollah, which escalated following the start of the Israel-Gaza conflict. Hezbollah, allied with Hamas, fired rockets at an Israeli town, causing casualties. The strikes on Lebanon reportedly hit a humanitarian center, drawing condemnation for violating humanitarian principles. Officials report that investigators have retrieved the data recorder from the container ship involved in the Baltimore Bridge crash. The Singapore flag dolly collided into the Francis Court Key Bridge, leading to six presumed deaths, including Miguel Luna. Luna, originally from El Salvador, was walking on the bridge during the crash. The incident occurred when the dolly lost power and crashed into the bridge, causing it to collapse into the Patasco River. President Biden has pledged full government support for rebuilding the bridge. A tragic accident occurred on a German motorway near Leipzig involving a Fleecebus coach, resulting in at least five fatalities and over 20 injuries. The coach, carrying 53 passengers and two drivers from Berlin to Nuremberg, en route to Zurich, veered off the A9 Autobahn and overturned. The exact cause of the accident is still unknown. Emergency services swiftly responded to the scene, and local hospitals were prepared for a major emergency. Both directions of the Autobahn were closed near the crash site, with the rescue operation expected to continue into the evening. Evening. Police boss expressed condolences and stated that they were assisting authorities in investigating the accident. A brown bear causing chaos in the Slovak town of Liptovsky Mikulas was euthanized after injuring five people. It took authorities 10 days to locate and kill the bear in a local forest. Slovakia's government aims to manage the bear population through controlled culling. Technologies like drones and biometrics aided in tracking the bear. Heightened police presence was implemented as a precaution. The bear, estimated to be a three-year-old weighing 70 kilograms, was captured in viral videos roaming the town. Five individuals, including a 10-year-old, suffered injuries, with two requiring hospitalization. And that's it on the Global News segment for tonight. Thanks very much for watching. I am Rebecca Goffey. And entertainment news organizers of Big Brother Nigeria reality TV show says the organization is ready to start up a new season as they review the requirements needed for qualification to become a participant of the reality TV show. BTV News and July Legoma has details of this report and more from the world of entertainment. Big Brother Ninja is gearing off for an electrifying comeback with season 9, introducing an exciting twist. In a recent announcement, the show organizers called for applications, but this time, they are seeking dynamic doors. Unlike past seasons, participants must apply in pairs for a chance to enter the Big Brother house. Starting March 27, 2024, aspiring housemates can kickstart their journey by submitting a 3-minute audition video showcasing why they and their partners deserve a spot in the house. The video is expected to dive into their personalities, background, likes, dislikes, and what set them apart as a dynamic duo. Applicants were encouraged to keep the audition natural and engaging, highlighting their chemistry and teamwork. Auditions are open to individuals aged 21 and above with a valid means of identification and the application process is free. Nollywood actress and filmmaker Eniola Ajo has explained why popular cross-dresser Bobriski won the Best Dressed Female Award at the premiere of her movie, Kaju, recently. Controversy trade Bobriski announcement as the Best Dressed Female at the movie premiere in Lagos over the weekend. Speaking in a recent interview, Ajo said the award was a stunt. According to her, it was all jokes. She said, and I quote, My team and I decided that it's needed to be in the faces of people. So we decided to give the Best Dressed Female Award to Babriski since he has always been a very controversial person. At the end of the day, people started talking about it, but some people are not happy. They started calling out Femi Adebayo, who presented the award. He just presented it. It was not his idea. He was not part of the judges. Nigeria should not slam him, please. Popular Nollywood actress Liz Ajuri has claimed that singer David Doe is hated because of his 
workaholic nature, despite his wedding background. She described David Doe as the most hardworking Nigerian artist, adding that his musical sources can be credited to his wedding background. The movie star berated those who throw the singer, stressing that despite his husky voice, he has achieved so much in the music industry. And that is it on Entertainment News Tonight. I'm Angela Ilegoma reporting for BTV News. And on sports news tonight, Argentina, without their injured captain, Lionel Messi, showcased their resilience on Tuesday in Los Angeles as Angel de Maria, Alexis Mark Alister and Lotaro Martinez orchestrated a comeback to secure a 3-1 victory over Costa Rica in an international friendly. BTV News, Millicent Agawa has details of this and more from the world of sports. Despite missing their star player, the squad concluded their two-match U.S. tour with a well-deserved triumph. The South American giant, who had previously defeated El Salvador 3-0 in Philadelphia, dominated the first half with promising chances. However, it was Costa Rica who initially seized the lead with a swift counter-attack. Alvaro Zamora capitalized on a rebound from Walter C to put Costa Rica ahead. Argentina rallied in the second half with veteran Di Maria showcasing his class with a special spectacular free kick to level the score. Moments later, Mark Alistair capitalized on a rebound from Nicolas Heda to give Argentina the lead. Martinez sealed the victory with a composed finish in the 77th minute, ensuring Argentina's successful outing despite Messi's absence. In the international friendly held in Marrakesh, Morocco, the Super Eagles of Nigeria suffered a 0-2 defeat against Mali on Tuesday. El Bilatore took advantage of a defensive error to give Mali the lead in the 18th minute, despite clear-cut opportunities for Moses Simon and Cyril Dezas to equalize. Nigeria failed to make a goal, allowing Mali to maintain their advantage. In the 86th minute, Kamori delivered a decisive moment, securing the victory for Mali and denying Nigeria any chance of a combat. The lost Max coach Finidi George's first defeat as interim coach for the Super Eagles following their impressive 2 1 victory over Ghana on Friday. Teams from across Europe are taking their spot in Euro 2024 following the end of the playoff rounds on Tuesday. The tournament slated to take place in Germany from June 14th to July 14th promises to be a spectacle with a diverse array of contenders. In Group A, Germany, Scotland, Hungary and Switzerland emerge victorious, securing their positions in the upcoming championships. Similarly, Group B witnessed Spain, Croatia, Italy and Albania booking their tickets to Euro 2024 after navigating through the competitive playoff round. The qualification battle in Group C saw Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia and England. Group D include Poland, Netherlands, Australia and France. Belgium, Slovakia, Romania and Ukraine emerged as the victors in Group E. Group F consisting of Turkey, Georgia, Portugal and Czech Republic. And that's it on Sport News tonight. Millicent Agagba reporting for BTV News. And thank you so much for staying with us. That is the size of our news package for tonight. My name is Tosim Toluwalo Ju. Do have a wonderful night rest. <laughs>